Okay, you should have a notification of another stream now. You have a notification on Facebook now that I'm back alive, I'm alive now. So wait for that notification before you um, press anything. Okay, so please everyone go on Facebook. The topic is Angels and You, part three. Angels and You, part three, okay? So that's the one that's alive now. Hallelujah. Finally, praise the Lord. Yeah. So please, I think you should have a notification that I'm back on, on Facebook. Oh, yes. Sister BC, Adil B, Obiora, Phil, the man. I'm sorry, guys. I, I Don't worry. Very soon we'll be, on, we'll be in a proper studio. I'm doing this for my office and study. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I'm so sorry. It was, wow, we've wasted quite in quite some time. Let me greet everyone quickly. Okay, me, Ola, Leye. Good evening to you too. Feel the man. Ah, uh, Dami Pastor. Why me, Pastor and Mrs. Why me? God bless you. Tosi Fajai. Rebecca, how are you doing, Rebecca? Um, Olushola, Ladeshu, Karen, all of you, welcome, welcome. Try and share quickly, let everyone get on. So, what you are sharing is angels and you, part three. What you are sharing is angels and you, okay? So, don't share relevance of God's angels to you, part three. Share angels and you, part three, all right? Everyone on Facebook, I'm sure you can hear me loud and clear, and we are good to go. Praise the Lord. So I did say, those of us that don't have, um, that are on Instagram, you will need to follow also through with the slides. And the slides are on Facebook. I can't put slides on Instagram. So if you have a, a Facebook account, could you also just open that by the side and let's go together. The Lord bless you. Got, a lo got, got some questions um, uh, the last time. I'm going to try and answer the questions either in this uh, final part of angels and you are relevance of God's angels to you, or I will find time to do that next week. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor T is on. God bless you. How is God's chambers? Um, Toba Philip, you're welcome. Good evening to you too. Good, good evening, y'all, like, like they say in Chicago. Amen. Now, let's quickly do a quick recap of what we did last week. Quick recap of last week. Um, hallelujah. A quick recap of last week. Categories of angels. All right. Categories of angels. Last week, quick recap. Um... Characteristics of angels, uh, we spoke about the key points. We talked about existence, their nature, and population. We also spoke about uh, um, their existence. They were created by God, created before man. I will not have time to go through all this again. So um, if, you, if you missed last week, for this week to make uh, um, uh, sense to you, you might have to probably also visit last week teaching i think you can get it on my youtube channel pk or Lowly. it should be available everyone on facebook please share those on instagram also could you also open your facebook account and let's start what we have for today what we have for today it's a wonderful day i'm sure the lord that is good to you is goodness the bible says um is forever is everlasting god's goodness is everlasting and they are renewed towards us every morning so today we are going to the last bit of it, the final part, angels and you, angels and you, angels and you. So um, I need us to be attentive. Let's quickly um, go to our text today. Our text, like we saw last week, um, is different this week. So let's quickly read some 91 9 to 12 father in the name of jesus father give understanding lord give um give us wisdom in the revelationary understanding of you 
Give us comprehension in our inner man, in the name of Jesus. Let this word go beyond our mind. Let it settle in our spirit. And let it profit us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray and amen. And Psalm chapter 91 verses 1, that is 9 to 12. Psalm 91, 9 to 12. God bless you. Nice to see you all. Riachi, you're welcome. Um, Gozi, you're welcome. All of you, welcome. Felix Makojolo, welcome. Shola Digbi, Baby, you're welcome also. Hallelujah. Psalms and chapter number 91, very quickly. Psalms 91, we're talking about angels. And I said, we need to know. If you don't know what is available to you, you will not know what you can, how you can take advantage of it. My people perish because they don't know. That's what the Bible says. Because of a lack of knowledge and most times a lack of understanding. Psalms 91, I'll read from verse number 9 to verse number 12. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. He, God, your Father, will give his angels charge over you to keep you in not some of your ways, in all of your ways. Now, like I told you before in the first part, angels are closer to you than anybody or anything you know. All right? To keep you in all of your ways. They're not there sometimes. They're there all the time. In their hands, they shall bear you up. In their hands. Okay? It didn't say wings. In their hands, they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. In other words, people, what this scripture is saying. If we don't have the ministry of angels. If we are ignorant of the ministry of angels. Or we do things that makes them, that incapacitates them to do what they are designed and sent by God to do. We'll be, we'll hit our foot against the stone. In other words, we'll be making so many mistakes. Going to places we shouldn't go. We'll be walking in error. But the Bible says it will give them charge of the heart. They will actually carry you to where God wants you to be. Alright, so that you do not walk in error. Or you do not walk into um, disaster. Or you do not enter into the trap of the enemy hallelujah in their hands they shall bear you up let you dash your foot against the stone psalm 103 just open up some few pages thereafter 103 we we'll read verse 20 and verse 21 psalm 103 20 and 21 bless the lord you his angels who excel in strength we read this last week who do his word Angels do the word of God, hidden the voice of his word. Now, please take note of that. Angels heed the voice of his word. They heed the voice of his word. They don't heed doubts. They don't heed anything that is not scriptural. They do not respond to any word that is not scriptural. I'm reading it to you again. 103.20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. They do his word, heeding the voice of his word. They do God's command, that's the first part. Then anybody that speaks God's word, they do the, what that person says to the person. All right, verse 21 says, Bless the Lord, all of you, his host, you ministers of his who do his pleasure they also do god's pleasure they do god's pleasure hallelujah now very quickly um we're going to go to our slide for today angels and you okay angels and you and the first part is i'm going to talk about their responsibilities responsibilities of angels to you very 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 important ladies and gentlemen responsibilities of angels to you it's important we know what their responsibilities is to you i told you today it's going to be about how they relate to you how you can relate to them how you can enjoy the ministry of angels so i divided it into two parts number one 
what they do to us. In other words, the contact ministrations, ministering spirits, the angels of God have towards the saints. Don't forget the Bible says they are sent to minister for, okay, for, not to, for those that, that are heirs of salvation. Okay, so their job is towards us from God. I divided it into two headings, so we're going to talk about their responsibilities under two broad headings. What they do to us, okay, how their, their, their existence and their presence, how it affects us directly. Then there are other, the other part is what they do for us. There are things you don't see them doing, they do. Okay, the ones they do for us, you can experience it in some way. You know it when it happens. The one they do for us, sometimes you cannot tell what's going on. So said, you've passed a lot of places where Satan's trap was there. They carried you on their arms. Do you know how that could happen? They could even sometimes cause your tire to just to, to, to go flat for that minute so that you don't drive into a, an 18 wheeler that is ahead of you. They, they, they work in different ways. Sometimes you start looking for a key that is not lost. Okay? And have you, I don't know whether it's happened to some of us before where um, you had a key and you were to go out. And for some reason, you put a key in your drawer and you look, you look into that drawer so many times, looking and searching for that key, and you can't seem to find it. Now, later, you go to that same drawer and you find the key. Now, if it has ever happened to you before, it might not be key, it could be in another form or way, please. Let me know, like and love, just, just like and love, and let me know so, so that we can all both resonate with what I'm talking about. The, the the work of angels is very amazing that's where they affect you directly i've had experiences where we look for a key and the key is not god just wants to keep you at home he wants you to dwell in safety for that split of a moment <coughs> okay for some is passport for some i mean several testimonies i won't have time to share but please be very sure hashtag the lord is with me the angels of God and compounds around you because the Bible says so. All right, so I'll be discussing in two broad headings what they do to us, then the other one is what they do for us. Let's run very quickly. We have so much to cover today. The Lord will help us. So we're going to first of all discuss what they do to us. It should be what they do for us. Please, this, this one is wrong i think i got the heading wrong it should be what they do to us not what they do for us <coughs> what they do to us okay please can you correct that the heading for this one is what they do to us not what they do for us i think we will be discussing what they do for us later um in a in the later slide but this first one is what they do to us please that's a typographical error by I made. So please, could you correct it in your own notes? What they do to us. Please, uh, it is important you get that right. I need to take a cup of water, please. It is important we get that right. What they do to us. The heading, the slide we are discussing now, I made a typographical error. Don't forget I said we are discussing their responsibilities under two broad headings. Number one, what they do to us, then what they do for us. This is a typographical error I'm just seeing now. This first heading is what they do to us. What they do to, not what they do for, all right? Number one is the fact that they bring information from God to you. Hallelujah. Angels, Old Testament, New Testament. Guess what? They're even more functional in the New Testament than we see in the Old Testament. There's a lot of angelic workings in the New Testament. Um, don't think because you now have the Holy Spirit that there are some messages that the Holy Ghost... Let me explain this. There are usually three channels, or uh, basically three channels. Let me, let me put a fourth one, that God uses in passing information across to His children. Number one, number one is the Word of God, His Word. Sometimes you'll be reading the Scripture, it will just jump at you. Okay, now I, I'm going to explain to you later that even that one, that scripture jumping at you, angels have some role to play in some instances. Number two is in the person of the Holy Ghost, in our weakness. 
audible voice, inner voice, whichever one, with whichever level you are, with the voice of the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Okay. Number three, God can send your angel. God can send your angel to come and give you information. Some of you receive direction in your dreams. Please, as I'm speaking, eh? If I'm lying, please just put a just put a, a, a dull face. If what I'm saying has happened to you in form one way or the other before, please like and love so that everyone that's listening that's never had any form of angelic um, ministration directly or indirectly can know that what I'm saying is the truth. Okay? Now, God can send your angel to come and give you some facts and tell you some things. I told you last week, or was it the week before, that when I was young, I, 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 my Bible has always been my love. I will study the scripture. It's when I don't understand it, I don't go to ask anybody. I go on my knees. Sometimes I fast and pray for days and ask the Lord, Lord, please, I don't understand this scripture. Can you explain it to me? And I keep seeing this guy comes in my dream. Usually it's my dream one or two times in the vision, but it comes as a human being, like someone like me. Okay. And it comes to explain things to me. And I know that is my angel. Sometimes it comes with another face, but like as a human being, it's not this face I saw before. But from his voice, I some I just know. I don't know. I can't explain it. I just know it's the same person, though it looks different. All right. So it's it, that is the working of angel. And a lot of you have this, you've had explanation of scripture in in your dreams before. Sometimes it's just you've had some vision. Somebody coming to explain to you. Same thing that happened to Daniel is still happening today, ladies and gentlemen. And the ministry of angels is still very, very intact towards God's children. In the name of Jesus, I pray the Lord Almighty will make you take advantage of every resource made available to you in Jesus' mighty name. So they bring direction from God. Now on that bringing information, I divided it into two. Number one is direction. Later you will see, understand now, direction. You know the story, Joseph, Matthew one twenty. the angel came and said, please, don't refuse to take on uh, Mary. Mary is, um, is pregnant of the Holy Spirit. Immaculate um, um, pregnancy she has, she's carried, all right, of the Holy Ghost. So don't leave an instruction. Direction comes from an angel. At another time, when, the, when Herod wanted to kill Jesus, it was an angel that visited Joseph again, again in a dream, and said, take the child, run away from here. Now, don't forget, angels are strong enough to protect Jesus. But sometimes, see, God's direction is not the same all the time. So don't think God is a formula. Don't ever make a formula of what a victory God has given you. Okay? Don't make a formula. I said that again. Don't make a formula of any victory God has ever given you. All right? God works in diverse ways and diverse manners. Okay? This same God that can deliver is the same one that sent his angel to tell um, Joseph, take the child. Leave this place for now. Go to Egypt. Stay there until I give you further instructions. All right? The disciples. Look at Acts chapter number 5. Acts 5, please. Write all this down. I'm going to need you to um, look at them later. Acts chapter number 5. Acts 5, 19 to 20. You know the story very well. In Acts 5, 19 to 20, the Bible says, the, the chapter before in chapter 4, the Sanhedrin, they had the council, they had arrested the disciples, they had beaten them, told them not to preach in Jesus' name again. In chapter 5, they, 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 they went to preach again, and miracles were happening. And the Bible says, the priests and all the elders again, they, they arrested them, put them in prison. Okay, locked it up. Chapter 19 says, an angel came. And an angel came, opened up the prison door. Oh, I'm not talking of spiritually. Physically opened up the prison door. They were in a physical prison. They were in a physical prison. Physic anything you see. See, even if you don't believe in the Old Testament. Anything you see in the New Testament. It can happen today again and again and again. And guess what? It is happening. I've had testimonies, one or two of my friends have had testimonies of how a door that was locked just opened. And when he went back there to open the door again, he found that it was still locked. He opened, he allowed him out, the door closed again. He went, I wanted to come back into the same place, the door was locked. There are angels at work, people. Angels at work. God can do great things. And he still does great things. Okay, he's not limited by by any 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 natural natural phenomenon or hindrance god is beyond all things so they went there opened up the prison they got out 
when they got there the next day to go and bring them to come and face the council, the Bible says that the, the, the prison was exactly, <laughs> I love my Jesus, I don't know about you, exactly the way it was when they left them in prison, it was locked up, no, there was no, 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 no first entry, obviously no key was stolen from anywhere, how did they get out? The work of angels. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May I pray for you. I don't know what's going on. But the beauty of, of God is just shining on us today. Every prison. Spiritual prison. Even physical um, limit, limiting walls of confinement. You found yourself. The Lord God Almighty will send deliverance on your behalf. An angel will come and cause you to escape. In the name of Jesus. So they give direction. And immediately they were released. The Bible says the angel now told them. It is important for you go and preach. So he told them, release them. Now told them to go to the temple. Don't go to the square. Don't go to your house. Don't go to anywhere. Go to the temple. People are waiting there to to listen to. You. They went to the temple, and as they were preaching, a lot of people got saved, and they were arrested again. The Paul Acts twenty seven twenty three direction came to him and said, Paul, don't worry. There is a shipwreck. This shipwreck, you will not die. And God has given you, not just you, everyone that stays on the boat will not die. The boat you are going to lose, but there will be no loss of life. Now, at some point later, so Paul got up the next morning in verse 23, and he told them that the angel of the Lord stood by him, and he gave him the message from God that, Paul, you are not going to die. Anybody in this boat that is on this boat will not die. At some point, some people wanted to get off the boat when the storm and the shipwreck started. And Paul said, if you leave this boat, your life is not secure. Your life is only secure. Direction. Direction. May God send his angels to give you directions in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bible says, talk about Cornelius. Cornelius was a man that was visited by an angel. And the angel told him, send to Joppa. There is a man called Peter. Let him come. He will come and preach to you. Direction comes through angels. Hey guy, hey guy, Genesis 16. The Bible says, God speaking concerning angel. Hey guy ran away from home. She didn't even know she was pregnant. An angel met her along the way in verse number 7 and said, Hey guy, don't run away. Go back to your master and your mistress. Submit yourself to her. You're already pregnant. You're with child. I'll make the child great. And I mean, you know the details afterwards. God is a wonderful God. Angels are there to give you direction. Sometimes they come in your dream. Sometimes they show up in other forms, but God will always give you directions. And he can use his angels as one of the agents of giving you direction. Okay, number two, the other part of the fact that they minister to us by way of giving, giving or bringing information from God to us. The second part of it is uh, they give us understanding they bring understanding from god and they bring to us in daniel let us read daniel 8 daniel chapter number 8 and verse number 15 and 17. when we are done with this study which we end today i need to go back get your bible everything on angels open it and study yourself all right it is important to study yourself okay no nobody can give you everything there are some things God will want you to know that I can't give you because of time or probably I don't even know. All right. But he wants to minister to you and speak to you himself. Always learn to study personally. Uh, Daniel in chapter number 8 and verse number 15 through 17. The Bible says, then it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning. Don't forget, Daniel was seeking the meaning. That suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice behind the banks of the Hulai, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the end, to the time of the end. So angels also are sent to give us understanding. Understand. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. God gives them understanding of particular things you need. Now, please, angels don't understand everything. All right? They don't understand everything. Um, uh, they are not omni omniscient. Please, don't get that wrong. They deliver what God gives them. So, the person that is coming to give an understanding of what Daniel saw, God gives it to that angel to bring to Daniel. Okay, so the angel is not coming to tutor Daniel based on what he knows. 
No, it's based on what God had given him to give Daniel. I need to be clear about that. I say that again. Please, listen carefully. Angels are not omniscient. They are, they are not all-knowing. A lot of things they don't know. If they are all-knowing, Satan will know everything about your destiny. They are not all-knowing. Don't get that wrong, all right? In fact, they don't know a lot of things about Scripture too, okay? But they know how to respond to God's Scripture. Now, the understanding of it, okay, um, um, uh, what, what they receive, what they can give you is what they have received from God to be delivered to you, okay? God gave it to Angel Gabriel to come and give Daniel. Angel Gabriel didn't know it. So, Abraham was not teaching Daniel out of what he knew. He was giving Gabriel out of what gave, God gave him to deliver to Daniel. Don't forget that, please. Very, very important. All right, let's get back to our slides. Okay? Revelations 1.1. 1, 1. The Bible says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. Now look at this. Things which must shortly take place. And he sent it and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Now, God gave Jesus revelation. Jesus did not give it to John directly. Jesus passed it to his angel, an angel, and told the angel to go and deliver. That's why you see, most of what John saw and heard, written in Revelation, was shown and told to him by angels. Most of it was shown to him um, by angels. Okay? Don't forget, please, angels are not omniscient. Everything he came to show John was what Jesus gave him to show. He can't show what Jesus did not. They don't do anything God did not tell them to do. I hashtag angels can't do what God did not instruct. Angels can't do what God did not instruct. Please know that clearly. They are never omniscient. Okay? They are not omnipresent either. All right? They are not all-knowing. They are not all-powerful. They cannot be God. And that's what Satan wanted to be. It was not sufficient to be one place at the same time, though he could move in seconds. But he wants to be like God, be everywhere at the same time. And he, for you to be God, he, can, he cannot. There is only one God. Hallelujah. So let's get back to the slide. Um, they can only deliver what they receive. Please don't forget, angels can only deliver what they receive okay now please i'm going to say some things here go back to your scripture check it very well i've not seen any place in scripture where a man was speaking to his angel himself all right they don't even listen to you all that gets them to work for you is your confessions of god's word not you addressing them i'll come to that very very soon let's move to the next one um I'm still continuing, okay? Now, this is, these are the things they do for, for um, they do to us. Things they do to us. I've said number one of what they do to us is that they bring information from God to us, okay? And I've said information in two categories. They give direction, then they give understanding and revelation. Now, number two of what they do to us is they minister strength to our soul, spirit, and body. I, I don't know about you now. I've, I don't know whether you ever had this problem or did you ever hit this crossroad or you've had times where you're just fed up. You've tried, you've prayed, you're just mentally tired. Spiritually, you're just at your lowest ebb and you don't know what to do. And suddenly, probably in worshiping or in praying, you just feel strength from somewhere. You feel you can take on the mountain. You have, been, you have been overwhelmed by the thought of the mountain before. Suddenly, you feel you can take on that mountain. An angel has touched you. That is their job. They strengthen saints. They strengthen us spiritually. Let's check scripture. Let's see what the Bible says. Please, we need to read all these ones. Because I need you to, take, to understand this. Whenever you say, Lord, strengthen me, it is an angel that touches you. When you say, Lord, strengthen me, an angel just touches you. But you cannot tell an angel to strengthen you. They don't listen to your instruction. All right, they respond to God's word in your mouth, but they don't take instructions from you. They are created by God. Don't forget where we read in Psalm 103. They are hacking to the command of God, not your own. All right, now please stay with me. 
Um, there is just one exception to that, but I will come back to it. I hope we we'll have time in the name of Jesus. So Luke chapter number 22 and verse 43. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was weary. Boy, Jesus needed some strength at that time. The friends, he called his friends, his disciples. They failed him. Nobody could really minister to him at that time. Jesus was, uh, was at his lowest ebb, as it were. And nobody was there to strengthen him. He needed strength. 22 and verse number 43. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Angels strengthen us when we are weak. And he asked the Lord, please don't speak to an angel to strengthen you. A demon will touch you. If you start to, uh, a, a, he call an angel to strengthen you, a demon will touch you. They don't take such instructions from you. Please, please. Uh, you see in scripture, everybody that made a request, okay, okay, made a request, the request went to God. God now passed instruction to the angel and the angel carried it out. It is important. Otherwise, you make yourself susceptible to demons. All right? Okay? But I'll tell you, there's just one part of it that is an exception. And um, um, I'll come to that later. So know that they strengthen us. Matthew 4, 11, remember, when this Satan was tempting Jesus, took him to a high pinnacle. And after he finished, it was the last temptation, he left Jesus there. We are taking Jesus to the high pinnacle. Jesus needed help to come down. The Bible says, chapter 4, verse 11, and the angels of God ministered to him. They ministered to him. Daniel chapter number 10. Let's read Daniel 10. Daniel is one guy that receives a lot of angelic visitations. I mean, you, you cannot talk about angels and not read the book of Daniel. Daniel 10, 17 to 19. I read very quickly. I'm reading from the New King James Version of Scripture. How, for how can this servant of, of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me, which is the angel, and strengthened me. And he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So he spoke to me. I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak. For you have strengthened me. You notice that hey, um, Daniel did not ask him to strengthen him. Okay? He did not ask him to strengthen him. Please, it's important. Um, there's this other part of it that I will just mention in passing. Um, they, when God, I don't know whether you've had an experience before where you, an organ of yours was changed. You know, you were sick, you were ill. Uh, um, an organ had failed. I've seen God do several miracles. I'm, I'm telling you, Jesus is a wonder. Jesus is a huge wonder. I've been seeing it for the since I met. I, I give. I, it is. He saved me and brought me into a relationship with Him. I've been seeing miracles. But people, there are creative ones where God changes organs, new eyes, new, 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 new any part of the body. God has it reserved in heaven. Okay? I think that whenever parts has to be changed, usually it's angels that do that job. We've had a lot of people testify how... Now, now there's, there's one I can, I, can, I can tell you about. I was there. My, my, the person that really built me up in the Lord, my original spiritual father, is a man of God called Evangelist Akinwaimi, Evangelist Enoch Akinwaimi. Such an incredible man of God. He, he invested so much in my life, brought me up, taught me prayers, taught me the word of God. That is, when I got born again, I got born again, and this man took me on and, and nurtured me in the Lord. And one of the, a few times he will, he will tell me to come fast and pray with him, and we're in church together, fasting and praying. And this time he had a, he had a toothache, and it was, the toothache was really bad. And we're in a fast. And I mean, you know how to it is your the nerves go straight to your brain. There's nothing. So he prayed and said, Lord, he doesn't want this pain anymore. Um, and that the Lord should just remove the tooth. So we slept. You won't believe it now, please. I was there. We woke up the next morning. We were just about two hours sleep because whenever 
we are, we are retreating like that. There isn't much sleep. Um, he woke up, he opened his hand, and the tooth was in his hand. And the tooth had been taken out from his mouth and was right in his palm. I was there. I'm telling you what I saw. Okay? So, there are people... God has done several... It is an angel that will pull out that tooth and put it in his hand. All right? I've, I've heard of people that I've experienced where um, they saw themselves suddenly in a dream. A few people share testimonies some of our, some of the meetings I went ministering and it's like God healed them and while, while the power of God healed them they fell under the anointing and they saw somebody one of them actually said he saw himself being wheeled to a theater and some people were there they are human beings but they are not talking to him they were removing some things and it's noticed that there was no blood when they were replacing all the things and he was there and he was conscious and seeing them okay and we've had different 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 testimonies now please let me explain this you can trust god for another organ you can trust god for another leg you can trust god for another eye you can trust god for any organ there's no part of your human physiology that there are no spare parts for in heaven and it's the angels i think it's the job of angels to go bring it when god gives an order they will replace organs hallelujah let's move very quickly and look at what they do for us what they do for us don't forget please ignore the typographical error first one was what they do to us now this is now what they do for us what do angels do for us number one protection they protect us psalm 91 verse 11 where we read in our text the bible says that their job is to protect you they will keep you in all your ways number two deliverance deliverance Psalm 34, verse number 7, I think we should read that. Bible says, the angel of God encompasses around those that fear him. Psalm 34, and verse number 7. Time is running, I need to run. But we'll soon be done. Yeah, we're almost uh, there. Psalm 34, verse 7. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Please be very sure that God's protection is upon you. The angels is with you. The, your angel is with you 24-7, never sleeps. At their realm, there's no sleep. At their realm, there's no fatigue. They don't carry a physical body that can be fatigued, okay? So their, their tiredness is not there. They, are, they, are, they can't sleep. They don't sleep, all right? They, they, they are with you, and they are there to protect you, protect you from danger, okay? They will deliver you from every snare of the enemy, okay? Protection is different from deliverance. Protection... Um, um, is to keep you from evil. Okay, deliverance is when you find yourself in places you shouldn't be, they make sure that you get out. Like you're in prison, and they make sure, you, like we just talked about Peter, how they were removed from prison, and the disciples, how they were released from prison. In another story, that they have another profound story, is in Acts chapter number 12. Acts 12, 7 to 11, you know the story, Peter was in prison, the angel came, touched him physically, woke him up, and said he should guard his loins, and he was brought out of prison. Uh, gates were opening of their own accord people angels excel in power and that that's this the angels i'm describing at least one is with you and it's been with you since the day you were conceived uh, to brought peter out of the prison and nobody could stand in their way in the name of jesus god will send his angels to deliver you from any form of spiritual emotional or physical quagmire you found yourself daniel 6 22 the Bible says Daniel was in the, in, the, in the lion's pit and the king came and asked him, Darius. Darius said, please, Daniel, are you fine? As God whom you serve, has he delivered you? And Daniel said, he said, the Lord sent his angel and the angel, they held up the mouth of the lion and they couldn't harm me. God will send his angel to arrest the mouth of every lion that wants to devour you in the name of Jesus and make a shape of your adversaries in Jesus' mighty name. You also know the story of Meshach, Shedad, and Abednego. This is Nebuchadnezzar now testifying chapter 3, verse number 28. And he says, Nebuchadnezzar says, Now that, God, blessed be the God of Meshach, Shedad, and Abednego, who has sent his angel to deliver them from the fire. Number three, they, they, what do they do for you? They persecute your enemies. I am interested in this one. They persecute our enemies. Read scriptures. Let us read it. I didn't make it up. Psalm number 35 and verse number 5 and 6. Psalm 35, 5 and 6. I love this scripture. I think everyone should get excited about this. Get excited about this word of God. 
I didn't write it. This is what Jesus, God himself wrote in his word. Ever true, ever profound. 35 verse number 5 and 6 of Psalms. Let them be like shafts before the wind. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. In Jesus' name, we pray that God will send his angels to chase what is chasing you. In Jesus' name, okay? They will chase them. Chase your enemies. Chase your adversaries. Chase. They will chase. I'm going to def define some chasing they do from scripture. We will see it together. And let the angels of the Lord chase them. Let, let their way be dark and slippery. Verse, verse 6, 6 keeps saying, And let the angels of the Lord pursue them. They pursue. Now, King James Ashton says they persecute. They persecute. In other words, persecute means three things. Let me show you. This is what it means. Number one, they kill. <laughs> angels of God kill. They kill. Second Kings chapter 19 verse 35 you know the story very well the assyrians came against uh, uh, um, uh, came against uh, ezekiah and the bible says ezekiah went and cried to god please he didn't cry to an angel he cried to god he cried to god he didn't cry to an angel god now sent one angel read that scripture second kings i think we should read it just one just one second kings 19 and verse number 35 for you to know the person your bodyguard the person standing by you please this one is not the kind of bodyguard that human beings will see and they remain on their feet they will they, they will take to their heels Psalms, first samuel and chapter number 19 verse 35 the bible says and it came to pass on a certain night that the angel just one just one please one only one do you know it was only one angel that went through Egypt and killed all the firstborn? Just one. The Bible says, and it came to pass on a certain day that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, they, there were corpses all dead. One angel. Woo! <laughs> now the Bible says, God says we have come to the company of numerous countless. Chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. Numerous countless happy angels. Now please, your one angel is capable of killing 189,000 minimum. Woo! <laughs> Do you now understand why David said, By the Lord I can run through a troop. By the Lord I can run through a troop. By the Lord, I can. I will grow high feet, walk upon my high places. Why? Greater is He that is in me. Greater is a day that are for us than they that are against us. Please rejoice, like and love. It is a great thing to know. One angel, at least if we have not found another number in Scripture, your angel is capable of killing one hundred and eighty-nine thousand human beings at one go. May God give us revelation. Not only do they kill, they terrorize and intimidate. They terrorize and intimidate. They terrorize and intimidate. Second, <laughs> Second Kings 7, 6. Let's just check that one out. They terrorize and intimidate. Look at what they do. They terrorize. No, no, they don't terrorize the righteous. They terrorize the enemies of the righteous. Second Kings chapter 7, verse number 6. For the Lord had caused the army of Syria to hear a noise of chariot and a noise of horses. The noise of a great army. They began to run. Now, God caused an angel to just boo -boo -boo -boo. In my kind of hit his foot. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of picturing it, okay? I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. And because the angel was just moving his feet on, on the floor, suddenly there was a tremor. They were hearing noises. People, angel, don't joke. Chapter number 28, Matthew 28. Let's see another one where an angel came terrorizing. Matthew 28, Matthew chapter number 28. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you're enjoying this. I am so excited. 
So this is the bodyguard I have, and I didn't know I've been afraid. Afraid for no reason. Matthew 28. Let me see you. We are the angels of God terrorizing the enemies of God again. Ah! Woo! Hallelujah. Small wonder. When they come before you one way, they will flee seven ways. Do you know why they will flee seven ways? They will see what even you yourself are not seeing. They will see the terrorizing power and presence of the angel of the Lord, and they will take to their heels. Chapter 1, chapter 28 of Matthew, verse 2 to 4. This was the resurrection of Jesus. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel, one bros, just one angel. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. Look at verse 4. And the guards shook. I can imagine they peed in their pants. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. <laughs> Woo! That is, if your angel shows up to your enemy, they will be like dead men. That's what Scripture is saying. Because these people saw the angel and the Bible says they froze. I can imagine they peed and pooped on, this, on themselves. That's what God will cause. God will cause that he will give a command. For your angel to terrorize whatever is terrorizing you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now they can make blind. They bind. All right. They bind. Very, very important. They bind. Revelations 21 to 3. I need you to look at that one. Even if we don't read another one. Quickly. Revelations 21 to 3. Revelations 21 to 3. Very quickly. Even if we don't read another one, I need you to read that one so that you will know that what the God we serve is much more than what we can imagine. Revelation 21 to 3, the Bible says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. An angel, please, one, one, not even Michael. They didn't mention the name. Nothing special about this angel. One angel. And I saw an angel having the key of the bottomless pit and a chain, a great chain in his hand. Verse 2. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, whose name is the devil and Satan. Please, I ask you a question again. How many angels did God send to bind the devil and put him in chain? Because the devil is not all that, please. It's not all we think. God only sent one angel against Satan. One! And the angel put him in chains and dropped him in the bottomless pit. And he couldn't fight back. Woo! <laughs> so the devil is not all that. Read your scripture. One angel. He didn't send 50 against him. He didn't send 10. One. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't, I feel like screaming. Bible calls it Satan, the devil. So that you mistake every name, dragon or whatever name they call him. One angel was enough. One angel. Guess what? Your angel is enough to handle Lucifer. Your angel, not Lucifer now, Lucifer became Satan. Your angel is enough to handle Satan. And that's why people, please don't be afraid. Don't stop living your life in fear. Don't think you can die before your time. God has your back. What he puts around you to be for you is stronger than the devil. Let us move to the last slide. Time is running down. Now, how do you get them to work for you? Very quickly, please. Time is running. Um, Instagram, please, if you go off, I will come back on Instagram. If it goes off, I will come back on again. Please, it's important. How can you get your angels to work for you? This is the most important part. All right? Number one, kingdom service. Now, let me explain myself. The Bible says there are ministers. Hebrews, Hebrews we read in chapter number one. Don't forget, the Bible says they are ministering spirits, messenger to minister. Anybody that engages in kingdom service, angels work with you. One of the ways to get your angels active and working because they can be redundant and do nothing. And, and an angel can be by your side and an angel of darkness is tormenting you because you are not allowing them to work. Okay? Darkness cannot stop them from working. You are the only one that can stop them from working. I say that again. Darkness cannot stop your angel from working. You are the only one that can stop them from working. All right, and one of the ways you can get your angels to work for you engage in service serve the lord serve the lord 
Go and evangelize, win souls. When the Bible says, and they went about preaching, the Lord walking with them with signs and wonders. It was angels accompanying, carrying out the instruction of God. Let the, replace the, this eyes, blind eyes. Give lead to the lame. Everywhere they were going, miracles were happening because we were engaged in service. When you go out to win souls, you will see angels at work. You will see the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to reconnect again to uh, Instagram. Okay, and if you're on Instagram and you want to join us, you're also free to join us uh, very soon. Um, I think I'll be able to reconnect very soon. Uh, da, 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 da. Thank you. Okay, it's not reconnecting. All right. So, please, it's important that uh, uh, you... Okay, I'm starting. I'm restarting on Instagram now. So I'm live, I'm, I'm back live on Instagram. Kingdom service, please. I need to finish this today. When engage in kingdom service, you see you are putting your angels to work. When you go out to windows, especially soul winning, when you witness, when you pray to go to pray for the sick, when you engage in service, when you go to minister the gospel. All right. Number two, write confessions. Now, this is the number one reason that Christians suffer. I hope you've written that after you want you to see my face. This is the number one reason Christians suffer. Number one reason. Why Christians suffer? Wrong confessions bind your angels. When you say wrong things, when when what you say is not scriptures. Let, let's go back to that Psalm 103. Now, before Psalm 103, let me show you the power of that. Ecclesiastes and chapter number 5, verse 6. Very quickly, Ecclesiastes 5, 6. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 5, 6. This is what the Bible says. This is... Um, Solomon warning, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messengers of God. King James says, don't say before the angels of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? In other words, anything you say, they act on it. You cannot say it's an error. So whenever you say, well, um, I am sick, you get, you, 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 you. You, 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 how will I put it now? I'm trying to look for the right word. You insult them. Okay? You, you, you paralyze them. You make, the, you make it impossible for them to minister to you. Don't forget Psalm 103 where we read. This Bible says all they do is they, they implement God's word. They act out God's word. They do what God says to do. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. They, they only do scripture. When you confess negatively, when uh, I am broke, I am sick, Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is uh, not good, this is not good. Every confession you make, all right, what, especially the wrong ones, wrong confessions, the angels can't work for you. But when you confess, so stop confessing your situation, confess the scriptures. When you confess scriptures, you put them to work. Because according to Psalm 103 verse 20, they do God's word. They do the word of God. It's very, very important for you to know that, please. Very key. How you get them to work for you? Engage in kingdom service. Don't just be a looker in church. Be doing something for God. Righteous confession, spoken word. Psalm Matthew 18, 18. Whatever you, you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So when you say a thing, they carry it out. All right, verse number three point be hospitable. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. The Bible says, Some have entertained angels unknowingly. Now, we need to say this because a lot of Christians, um, there's this, there's this, there's this, uh, bunch of bunch of lies, satanic snares that has been being peddled all over the internet, talking about effort, 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 effort. Uh, it's all about your results should be all you can do. It's not what God has said. Don't join that, please. Uh, you, F, you are not a child of effort. I say again, you're a child of grace, first of all. All right? When grace comes before your efforts, your efforts will not be effort anymore. It will, it, it will be work, not labor. All right? Chapter 13, verse 2. Do not forget Hebrews. Do not forget to entertain strangers. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some had unwittingly entertained angels. Please be kind to people. Help the motherless. Help widows. 
Help the fatherless. Help people that are helpless. A lot of you have refused to help angels. Oh. A lot of us. I think it was um, somebody was sharing a test. A, 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 um, I don't know whether anybody that's listening to me now, you you know you missed an opportunity. Somebody came to ask you for something, and before you could turn back, the person had gone. Uh, because you refused it. That was an angel, most likely. All right? Angels love when you are hospitable. Okay? They, Lot will have missed the angels that went to Sodom to destroy Sodom. It was hospitality that confined them to stay with him. Okay? Please be hospitable. Eh? Be hospitable. I, 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 I used to fall into that error, you know? I, I used to give a lot to... Give, give arms to a lot of these people that ask for arms on the road. Um, these deformed, disabled uh, people who have been maimed in some way or the other, especially those, the northerners. You know, then I started joining, then I stopped at some point. I started joining in this lie that, oh, they go and enchant on your money and blah, 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 blah. Stupidly, I stopped. Until one day I read my Bible, I said, I got to ask myself, this was years ago, long, uh, quite a while ago. I asked myself the question, what's wrong with me? Am I, am I okay? If my money is chantable, then it's not from God. Something is wrong with me. All right? Um, but in giving also be very sensitive. There are sometimes God doesn't want you to give. I think I, I shared this story in the first episode where I saw this woman that was very sickly, blah, blah, blah. You need to, you need to, be, uh, you need to be demonic to, not to have compassion on her. I wanted to give her money and the, Lord, the Holy Ghost told me clearly not to. Then not too long, I met another lady that was well-dressed. And I mean, you feel she should be walking. She's not maimed in any way. She's not deformed. You should, she was, her clothes was even more expensive than mine. And she was begging and asking me for money. And the Lord told me to give her. It, it was a lesson I learned. So please be sensitive also. Listen to the Holy Ghost. But please, no, your money is not chantable. Nobody can uh, uh, enchant on your money. All right? If your money is enchantable, then it wasn't from God. All right, but at the same time, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Please be hospitable. Christians are too nasty these days. Eh? Someone needs water. You have water. You can't give. What is? I, there, there's something wrong. It's, we're we're just living like mere people now. A lot of times, angels have asked you for water. Bible says Abraham. It was because of hospitality that made Jesus and two angels come and visit him. They were just passing by. If he did not invite them in, they would not come in. You remember the. Um, the uh, eight, the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. When they got to where they were going, Jesus did like as though he was going to go. They constrained him, you must eat and you must drink. Be hospitable. Be hospitable. Huh? Be good to strangers. You don't need to know somebody to be kind. Yeah? Exhibit the love of your father and the kindness of your father. Our nature is kind. We are not nasty people. The nature of Christ is kind. All right? Please be hospitable. Hospitality, when you help others, angels get to work. When you pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues, I'm winding down now. When you pray in tongues, you also, they love it. Now, let me explain the mystery of this. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. When I saw this, I was excited. I was excited. You know, for, for a reason beyond this before, I, I pray more in, 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 my, in an unknown tongue than I pray in my understanding. When I mean 90 to 10, I mean 90 to 10%. All right, I had got a revelation of praying in the spirit um, while I was a young man, and since then I pray more in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I even exclaim in tongues. The Bible says, First Corinthians 31, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Now, there is a tongue of angels. The heavenly language God gave you when you got baptized in the Holy Spirit is the tongue of angels. Angels understand it. Okay, and the devil does not, Satan does not. He has no such capacity because it is what the Holy Ghost gives you, not what darkness can give you. So darkness will never understand God. Don't forget, the Bible says there's no fellowship between light and darkness. It also says that the things of the Spirit to a carnal man or to darkness or to someone who is not of God, it is foolishness. So when you are praying in your Holy Spirit, angels understand that. Let me explain. Um, my, 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 my wife is half Ghanaian. My mother-in-law, my beautiful mother-in-law, is Ghanaian. Now, when when she and my my wife are pretty close, they're the best of friends. 
Now, whenever they want to say something somewhere and uh, they don't want either myself or any other person to understand, it, well, obviously they're not, they not saying anything nasty. Probably they just want to say something coded. Mommy, mommy wants my wife to go do something. She speaks to her in Fanti because my wife understands Fanti. Now, at that point in time, all of us that were lost, okay, we're lost. We, we, we don't understand what they're saying, but the two of them. Now, we cannot even stand in their way because we don't understand what they're saying. When you speak in tongues, when you speak the language of the Spirit, the one you received when you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, what happens is you and the angel, you are communicating. All right? You are communicating with your angel. Now, he's taking a request to God and he can bring an answer back. All right? Because he understands what you're saying. I the PK will not understand what you're saying. No man of God will understand. Not your neighbor, except obviously you are speaking, you are operating the gift of diverse tongues and you interpretation of tongues can come okay besides that speaking in the language you receive during baptism of the holy spirit is not the gift of diverse tongues that is your own personal language in communicating with god and the angels understand it so when you pray in tongues you put your angels to work they love it because nobody darkness no demon cannot be there and be listening they can't they can't be here they can't hear they don't they don't understand what you're saying all right they can't They can't hit drop on what you are discussing. Now, I want to quickly end this. Finally, pray to God so that so they can get to work for you. Now, let me explain this. It's very important. We're we're ending now. Just one more minute. Matthew 26, 53, please. Let's read this. Matthew 26, 53. Matthew 26, 53 is important for you to see this. I I if Matthew 26, 53. I was looking for that scripture found it. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Or do you think I cannot pray to my father? Pray to my father. Do you think I cannot pray to my father? And my father will not send 12 legions of angels. This is God in human flesh speaking. If there's only one that had the authority and audacity to just call angels directly, it should be Jesus. But Jesus is showing us man cannot call them directly. You pray to God. They only take orders from God. The Bible says who do his commands. They do his commandment. Not your own. Don't talk to your angel. Please don't pray to angels. Demons will afflict you. Just know they are there. All right, but you can say, Lord, Lord, send your ministering spirits to go ahead of me. That is correct. Okay, don't say ministry spirits go ahead of me. They will not listen to you. They don't take orders from you. But when you say, Lord, send your ministering spirit, don't forget, God, Jesus told us, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he didn't say whatever you ask the angels. That's the one he promised he would do. Whatever you ask the Father in my name. Okay, don't ask any angel. Don't ask. Don't talk to anything you can't see. Okay? Talk to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Okay? Talk to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Don't talk directly to your angels. This is Jesus himself. He said, if I need angels, I will ask my Father. He didn't say, I will call for angels. Please, let me, let's read the second scripture. So that... 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 18. Very quickly, please. I will show you one the Old Testament. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 18. Very expedient, please. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Some have given themselves up to demonic influences and opened themselves up to demonic oppression because of this nonsense. Chapter 2 and verse number 18. This is Elijah speaking. Chapter 2, verse number 18. Elijah rather. The Bible says, and when they came, and when they came back to him, for he had stayed in Jericho. Uh, no, I think I got the. I'm so sorry. It's not chapter. It's not chapter. I'm so sorry. Mm, forgive me, please. Thank God I have my, I have my notes here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I made a mistake there. This was the place where the Bible says it was, sorry, chapter 6, please. Correct that. Correct that for me, please. Correct that chapter 6, verse 18. Second Kings 6, 18. It's not chapter 2, please. Typographical error again. Go help PK. Chapter 6, 2 Kings 6, 18. Bible says, So when the Syrian came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord. Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And God sent his angels to strike them with blindness. He prayed to the Lord. Don't play, pray to any angel. It is scripturally forbidden. Alright? It is forbidden. Praise the Lord. I think I will have to stop here. So I say the last statement in the last slide says, on the last slide says, please, please, I am begging you, don't pray to angels. Pray to the Lord. The Lord will command them to do what? To do his bidding hallelujah i'm going to be able to answer some questions next week but guess what pastor bola is back next week um we'll be starting another she she probably will be taking next week so um i'll be supporting her and um i can be sure you you'll be so blessed your life won't be the same again the principle of engaging the girl is to to direct our request to the father who sends them on assignment Thank you, Sister Lola. You, you know how to put these things. I'm sure you are, you are very literal. It is scripturally wrong to communicate directly with angels, with or unto angels. God is their lawgiver. Okay, that's very, very good. That's, please, that's so, she's, she's helped me appropriate, appropriate it in very nice words. All right, please don't pray to angels. Um, till I come your way again next week. I don't, I mean, um, we just finished Leave It Loud in South Cartoon. It was a blast. All right, it was a blast. Any any of the any of the attendees, if you are if you are, if you are online, could you just like and love and let's show these people we had a lovely time. And if you're a youth in Canada, please next Leave It Loud is in Montreal. Make sure you are there. Your life cannot be the same again. I love you so much, but Jesus, whom we serve, loves you so much more. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That the Lord will give his angels charge over you. You will not hit your foot against the stone. In other words, you will not walk in error. The Lord God Almighty will give a command that um, every battle that is yet to be won, he will send, command his angels to fight for you in the name of Jesus. Um, you, will, you will not confess negatively. Everything you have said that I think capacitated your angel. The Lord will grant you wisdom and grace to reverse it in the name of Jesus. From today, no ungodly word. Please don't, in Jesus' name, you start speaking your circumstances. You start speaking the word of God because they act on God's word. God bless you. And when you are very, 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 very full of faith in your heart, they enjoy it and they will walk with you. And the Lord will keep you and bless you and uphold you in Jesus' name. This will be a wonderful week for you. And you will end the year better than you started it. God bless you. And don't forget, it's all about Jesus. It's your brother again, Piki Olawale, saying Jesus loves you. And so do I. Hallelujah.